All right, class, here we have the miter saw. I'm gonna go over some components here and some safe use steps. First of all, the main thing you need to know about the miter saw is there are two flat surfaces that the wood must come in contact with when you're cutting with this saw. They are the table and the fence. So the table is this area right here, and the fence is this area right here. So you've got a flat horizontal surface, the table, and a flat vertical surface the fence. Very important vocabulary and important that you, you know, remember to keep your wood flat against both those things. Over here on the saw is the motor, but underneath the motor there's a small inconspicuous little pin. That is what's going to unlock the hinge on the miter saw. So we're going to press down in the handle area. We're going to take the pressure off the pin and you can slide the pin out like that. And that is going to allow this, the hinge arm of the miter saw to, to lift up. Attached to that, you do have the motor, you do have the blade, and um, the blade is hidden underneath this blade guard. Now, you don't really need to mess with the blade guard, because as you can see, as you bring the saw blade down, the blade guard is automatically gonna retract out of the way. Here's an example piece of wood. This is not an acceptable place to put the wood. Now, let's kind of explain why. When the blade spins, guys, it's spinning this direction. The teeth of the blade are at the bottom of the blade. They're pushing your workpiece that direction. So if I were to turn the blade on like this and bring the, wood, the, the blade down to the wood, if it comes in contact with the wood at this moment while the blade were spinning, then the, the piece of wood is gonna be slammed back that direction. But it won't be slammed back that direction safely. It will be slammed back that direction with lots of force. It will make a loud sound. It's very distinctive sound. And it will mess up your wood on the surface. It won't cut cleanly, it won't cut nicely. Um, and it will probably you know, be all jagged and, and crooked and stuff. And more than likely, that piece of wood will go flying beyond the confines of the table and the fence. It will go back this direction could go out that direction. In order to prevent that, in order to make your cut safe and clean, you need to make sure that you press it all the way up against the fence. Very, very important, I can't emphasize that enough. Obviously, gravity is gonna hold it against the table, but you have to be very intentional to put your wood all the way back there against the fence. This saw is generally meant for cross-cutting, which is when you cut across the grain of the wood like this. You guys can see the grain of the wood going back and forth like this, right? We only cut across the grain with a miter saw. This is a, called a cross cut. So let's say I wanted six inches and the remainder right here would be scrap. So I'll put an X on the scrap side, meaning I don't need that, right? The blade is an eighth of an inch thick, which is about that thick, okay? So I want the blade to go on the side that the X is on. I want the entirety of the blade on this side, okay? So I've got to line up my cut now. So I've marked, I've measured, I've marked, I know where I want to cut. Now you have to go about lining up your cut. This is what you should be seeing when it's time for you to line up your cut. Go ahead and bring your, your, yourself down here. Bend over just a little bit, maybe kneel down. And as you bring the blade down non-spinning, you should sight down this edge of the blade which is the side that you want, right? This is the side um, that I measured. You're gonna slide your, your workpiece over just so that the blade is, is looking like this, okay? You don't want it like this or like this where I can't see that mark. You wanna be able to see the mark just like that. This is all gonna turn into sawdust and that will be waste. And this is what I'll keep, okay? You wanna be able to see the mark on the side of the piece that you wanna keep. Okay, so bring your blade down non-spinning, line up your cut just like that. And then you're gonna, and this might be the part that's a little bit nerve-wracking for some of you, because it does make a lot of sound, but you're gonna wanna use your left hand over here. Now guys, I'm not anywhere near the yellow portion. I'm not anywhere near the slit right here where the blade's gonna go. I'm right over here, okay? As far away as I can be. The blade cannot touch my hand at this point. It's impossible, so don't be scared. Okay, so I've brought my blade down non-spinning to line up my cut. It's in the perfect right spot. I've got my safety glasses on. If you would like, you can get some hearing protection. I like to wear my ear protection. 
when I'm cutting on this thing because it is a little bit loud. Sustained exposure to loud sounds will cause hearing damage. So I, I work in here a lot. I want to use my hearing protection. I don't want to be deaf. So then I come up here with my right hand. I'm going to grab the handle up here with my right hand. You're going to use your support hand, your left hand, to hold that piece so that it doesn't move left or right, because it could. Now there's this trigger right here inside the handle. You're going to pull that trigger. You're going to keep it pulled through the entirety of the cut. Now, this is also important. This is on your test. Make sure that when you pull the trigger and you start the motor, that the blade is not touching the wood. So you're going to start the motor before the blade touches the wood. You're going to cut all the way through. You're going to bring that blade down. Now it's spinning, right? You're going to bring it all the way through your cut. Now this is important. Sometimes people want to stop right about here because it gets a little bit harder to push down right here. But look, there's that much more you can push it. And you do need to push it all the way through because otherwise what's going to happen is you'll have a little piece of wood back here that didn't get cut and your, your two pieces will still be connected by that, those few fibers back there. Watch what I do for the last step of the safe cut. Here we go. Okay, did you see that? That was the last step right there. I took my hand off the trigger, but I kept the blade in the downward position until the blade stopped spinning completely. That's very important. Um, if you don't do that, then there's a risk that this piece that you're not holding onto could get caught on the teeth of the blade and go flying that direction. So you want to make sure that the blade comes to a complete stop before you lift it up. When you're done with the saw for the, for the day, bring it down like this and push that pin in that we, sh that we saw earlier. And now it's in a safe position. Let's, uh, let's talk about one more thing before we wrap this up. Sometimes there will be a stop block installed over here on the miter saw. If we're cutting something over and over again, repeating our cuts over and over again, we don't want to have to measure every single time. Uh, that can lead to inconsistencies, it's time consuming. So what you want to do is utilize this technique called a stop block. It's just a piece of wood right here where you'd slip the wood in and the wood will butt up against your stop block and every single time it will cut the same exact distance. So here we have a piece of wood it's kind of long and let's say I wanted to cut this piece of wood to be exactly 12 inches every time what I can do is adjust this stop block so that it always the piece of wood that I bring in always if I slide it this direction hits that stop block and it stops my wood at 12 inches every time okay so right now it's not set up at 12 inches, but if you wanted to do that, we could come back here and loosen the screw and, and adjust. We have a little bit of adjustment for where that goes, okay? Now this won't work for every length of wood that you need to cut, unfortunately, but it does help sometimes, okay? So you always wanna make sure that your wood is flat against the table and the fence and the stop block if you are using it, okay? You always wanna make sure that you start your blade up here where it's not touching the wood, start your blade up here, then cut all the way through, make sure that you get that last little bit, then release the trigger, but keep the saw in the downward position until the blade stops spinning. When the blade stops spinning, then it's safe to pull the saw back up to the starting position. But if you're done, push the pin in, okay? Here's a question that's on your safety test. Uh, the motion of the saw blade will want to forcefully push the work against what? Is it the table or is it the fence? Um, so I've already talked about that. Make sure you, you, you know the answer to that one. Hold your workpiece firmly with your support hand. Um, will the saw stay on if the trigger is released? No, the saw will go off when you release the trigger. Sometimes people, uh, if they're new to the miter saw, they'll come up here and they'll pull the trigger and then they'll release it before they actually cut through any of the wood. So just be aware of that. You need to wait until the saw comes to a complete stop. You always need to wear safety glasses. As with any power tool, guys, make sure your, your, um, you know, your jewelry, your lanyard, your long sleeves, your hair are all tied up and secured. If there's somebody cutting on the miter saw and you're standing near, very important to me that you give them plenty of room. Do not crowd them, do not stand too close. On the floor here, you'll see 
I've got some things for you to stand on, some like uh, soft pads for your feet that just makes it more comfortable when you're standing in those working areas. Uh, a good rule of thumb is that if you're a bystander, don't stand on those. Just give that the person plenty of room. Uh, so just give people, you know, an arm's length of room. Um, let's see. Sometimes, guys, if we have a really long piece of lumber, um, we'll, we'll set it up so that it goes back this direction, and you might need to help somebody. So there's kind of like two ways to support a really long piece. Let's say you had like an eight foot long two by four or something like that. This isn't that long, but we'll imagine it's really long. If I wanted to cut it right here, well, here's the deal. I could, this piece is light enough, I could easily support it with my left hand. But let's say you had a really long, heavy piece of wood. It's gonna pull down like this. Well, you need your work piece flat against the table, remember? So right now, my work piece is not flat against the table. There's a couple ways you can do that. You could take a block like this, which is four, what we call a four by four, and you can set it underneath like that, and that will help quite a bit. If the piece is very long, you can have a partner come stand way down here and hold that piece up like this for you, if the piece is very long. Now, does that person need to be wearing their safety glasses? They're not, they're not that close to the saw, right? They're not that close, they're just, they're way down here, right? Maybe they could get away without wearing safety glasses. No, wrong, always wear your safety glasses. Okay, that's a question on the quiz, on the safety test. Make sure you're always wearing your safety glasses, even if you're, functioning as a support, supporting uh, role there. All right guys, I think that about wraps up our miter saw instruction and uh, pre preparation for your safety test. Um, you know, go ahead and review this if you need to, but you should be ready to go ahead and get on that miter saw safety test at this point. All right, thank you very much.